The Auditor General conducts financial audits and performance audits and reports on the results of these audits to Parliament. On the 15th of October 2014, the Auditor General tabled his performance audit report, Mental Health Strategies for the Justice System. As I'm sure you are all aware, mental illness is a significant issue for our community. In the criminal justice system, the rate of mental illness is much higher than in the community generally. Since 2009, there have been three major plans for mental health, one of which focused specifically on the justice system. Each highlighted the importance of agency collaboration. However, none of the plans present a comprehensive framework for managing and improving pathways for people with mental illness who pass through the justice system. The objective of this audit was to examine the effectiveness of planning and coordination for mental health across Victoria's criminal justice system. In particular, we examined whether effective planning guides agency action and coordination, and effective coordination supports agency actions. The audit looked at each of the four key areas of interaction for a mentally ill person who travels through the criminal justice system. The audit included Victoria Police, the Magistrates Court of Victoria, for which services are now provided by Court Services Victoria, and the Departments of Justice, Health and Human Services. The audit found that there are increasing interactions between people with a mental illness and agencies in the criminal justice system and a lack of capacity to adequately manage these needs. While justice and health agencies have initiatives to address mental illness, there are gaps. There is no overarching plan or leadership that is focused on improving outcomes for people with mental illness in the justice system. Agencies are working together, but further collaboration would improve outcomes. Responsibility for coordinating the agencies is not clear and there is a lack of accountability for success across the justice, health and human service agencies working within the criminal justice system. Victoria Police is often required to respond to people with a mental illness that come to their attention as a result of offending, behaviour suggestive of a mental disorder or the effects of alcohol or drugs. In the last five years, there's been a considerable increase in demand on police arising from incidents involving suspected or actual mental illness. This graph shows that police attendances at incidents involving suspected or actual mental illness more than trebled between 2009-10 and 2013-14, rising from 2,769 to 8,569. This increase is a cause of concern for Victoria Police because of the high demand on police resources. The Department of Health is also concerned about effective management of demand, particularly on hospital emergency departments that arises from these police incidents. Since 2013, Victoria Police and the Department of Health have been meeting regularly and developing a joint framework to address areas of related responsibility, including for mental illness. However, we found that Victoria Police and the Department of Health need to improve the governance around how local police, mental health, hospital and ambulance services are coordinated. Effective local coordination is required to ensure local policies and arrangements support effective responses to incidents involving mental illness. Since 2002, the Magistrates Court has piloted and developed specialist courts and support programs to divert offenders with mental illness, drug and alcohol dependency and related issues into treatment and to address the causes of their offending. This reduces rates of imprisonment. This graph shows the number of clients accepted to the specialist courts and programs most relevant to people with mental illness from 2009-10 to 2013-14. The overall decline in client numbers over this period is because the needs of clients have become more complex, meaning the court is able to support fewer clients within its available resources. 
We found the Magistrates' Court does not have a current plan and is not part of a cross-agency forum that could guide the further development of the Court's activities for people with mental illness. A plan for development of the Court's specialist courts and support programs is needed to ensure that their role and outcomes for people with mental illness can be maximised. The Magistrates' Court needs to establish strategic relationships with other justice, health and human services agencies so that the court's services in areas such as housing are effectively coordinated with those other agencies. And so the agencies are jointly able to consider strategies for reducing offending and improving the recovery of people with mental illness. Victoria Police holds people in custody who are arrested and charged until they are released on bail or transferred to prison. People with a mental illness who are imprisoned receive voluntary treatment within prisons. Prisoners whose condition meets the criteria of the Mental Health Act 2014 for compulsory treatment must be transferred to Thomas Embling Hospital for treatment. We found that mental health beds in prisons and Thomas Embling Hospital have not kept pace with the number of prisoners requiring treatment and that waiting times have increased significantly. In 2013-14, utilisation of beds for women averaged 80% and for men effectively 100%. The number of male prisoners per mental health bed has increased from 85 in 2009-10 to 110 in 2013-14, compared to 20 female prisoners per mental health bed in 2013-14. Waiting times for male prisoners requiring access to Thomas Embling Hospital have also increased significantly, from five days in 2009-10 to 22 days in 2013-14. We found that the Department of Justice and Department of Health are separately planning around their closely related mental health facilities and services for people with mental illness inside and outside prisons. In particular, the Department of Justice is planning for 75 new prison mental health beds for men in 2017. While there is good communication between the departments, we found that there is no overarching plan integrating mental health facilities and services across custodial settings, and the Departments of Justice and Health have not clarified arrangements to ensure the decisions arising from their planning are coordinated. This is significant because prisoners requiring compulsory treatment cannot receive this in prison and must be transferred to Thomas Embling Hospital. Without improved rates of admission for prisoners to Thomas Embling Hospital, long waiting times for seriously unwell prisoners will continue. Finally, the audit found that Victoria Police has improved its health services in police cells but does not monitor the time that police prisoners with mental illness are held in cells before they can be transferred to the prison system, where they can receive more effective care. Corrections Victoria and the Departments of Health and Human Services help prisoners with a mental illness to prepare to return to the community at the end of their prison sentences. This table shows the number of male and female prisoners from 2009-10 to 2013-14, released from prison with a risk rating for mental illness. The number of prisoners released with a P1 serious psychiatric illness requiring intensive treatment and immediate care increased by 46%, and the number of prisoners released with a stable psychiatric condition requiring continuing treatment, P3 risk rating, increased by 39%, from 933 to 1,300. The Departments of Justice, Health and Human Services operate support and housing programs for this group. However, there is insufficient coordination of planning for support of released prisoners with mental illness. The agencies are starting to work together, but planning is not informed by a consistent framework of objectives or analysis of demand. We also found that Corrections Victoria, the Department of Health and the Department of Human Services do not regularly communicate around these programs. 
This increases the risk that agencies will miss opportunities to improve programs and services for people with mental illness. The audit made 13 recommendations. The key recommendations are summarised on the following two slides. The recommendations focus on strengthening relationships between agencies at the strategic level, developing plans for programs and initiatives that involve more than one agency, and strengthening governance of services that are required to coordinate. Agencies have accepted all the recommendations. The Auditor General's Office has previously released a number of other performance audit reports covering issues related to mental health and issues in the justice sector, including prisons. These include some of the audits listed on this slide. All our reports are available on our website. If you have any questions about this or other reports, or if you have anything else you would like to discuss with us, including ideas for future audit topics, please call us on 03 8601 7000 or contact us via our website.